Shalom, given all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Rakai Kodash Shalom to 144,000 Risi Shalom to you all. Anyway, I'm going to entitle this video Trump Cannot Save Babylon. Trump Cannot Save Babylon. Babylon will be destroyed, which is code. We speak in code. The scriptures speak in code. Like, for example, Ezekiel 28. The king of Ty Tyrus being wiser than Daniel is code for Esau. And that's a whole nother subject right there. King of Cyrus was not wiser than Daniel. The king of Cy uh, the Tyrus, Cy Cyrus, Ty Tyrus. Can, um, matter of fact, let me go to that. You see this picture right here? I'll come back to this. Let me do this here. Uh, let me slide this over here. And um, yeah, we're listening to uh, the bishop. We're listening to Bishop Nathan. He's getting down. He was getting down. He was saying a lot of good things, and he was going into. Uh, the uh, book, the uh, history of the Indians, of American Indians. I got the book right next, right next to me, right in arms length. I'm not gonna go get it. History of the Indians or the American Indians. It's right in arms length, which I'm not gonna get. Um. Anyway, um, there was a part where he was he's reading had Yuri, <laughs> Officer Yuri, read. Uh, part of the book that goes into this guy James Adair lived among Gad for either a year or a couple of years or whatever so he did study them you know and um, he came to the conclusion that these would have to be Israelites and one of the things he said were, was they called on Yahweh and even um you know, Nate had to, he said, J, J, there's no letter J, but he still uses Jesus. So I don't know why. Well, I have a good idea. He's, he took the bag. I think he's feeling guilty about it. He's probably thinking about, uh, the so-called God sent comforter and the comforter didn't comfort nobody. The mo most I took him out and that school, the former or the, I might as well say former. The ICGJC is nothing but, as I say, a little house on the prairie. It's it's an insignificant school. Uh, High Priest Ariar is retired. High Priest Shaw is retired. They don't run anything. They're just being, I would say, taken care of. I hope they're being taken care of. Because if I find out that they're not, we're going to step in and take care of them. Because of their past deeds. They were two of our teachers, so I believe that they're taking care of them. But uh, you know, they're insignificant. They, you know, when people mention Hebrew Israelites, Hebrew Israelism, they're gonna mention the ISUPKs, the IUICs, the GMS, the uh, the Sakaris, the, and so forth. So I can go on all day with all these other groups that pop, you know, popped up. Um. So, uh, wow, wait a minute, salvation reaches to the end of the earth. Okay, we were reading this yesterday. This is one of the scriptures. I'm a little all over the place, but bear with me, bear with me. Yeah, we were reading this. <laughs> we read an NLT, you know, we bro broke it down into numbers. And this right here goes into the new covenant, but certain things have to be established before you get the new covenant. Uh, and I love this is my new go-to scripture. What I did was I put in the word covenant and just was, it came up a bunch of times, hundreds of times. And I said, and I said, let me do a video just on this, which part of the title of the video is Isaiah 49, 8. It said, thus say if you how in an acceptable time, have I heard thee? So he's hearing us now. And in a, and that started with Abba. It started with Abba, which is Elijah coming back. And in so 
the Lord, our Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, has been listening to us. We're talking um, almost 100 years. Because I became on the scene uh, in the, I would say, around the 30s, 40s. Let's say, you know, the doing doing a, a market um with some uh, Marcus Garvey. This is before um, Malcolm X and um, MLK and you know Martin uh, Marcus Garvey was way before them. <clears throat> you had uh, then the Nation of Islam Islam popped up. Then you had the Commandment Keepers. Which these Jakes were dealing with, uh, they were sitting side by side with the small hats. So they had to learn this again. Hey, jujitsu for you brothers that uh, part of jiu -jitsu, Brazilian jujitsu. Brazilian jujitsu came from Japanese jujitsu, in which they took it. If you know the backstory about the Gracies, the Japanese businessman who one of the Gracies uh, established him in Brazil and to and to uh, show his uh, appreciation, he showed them the ancient art of jujitsu, and they pretty much made it their own. They added a lot of other things to it, but so Japanese had to had to g learn from the J the Gracies real jujitsu because it was lost in Japan. So the same thing, the same thing goes. They just took back what they had, and another group had to give it to them. So the same thing with the the Jays. We had to come up under them. Even uh, Yaikwab said that we had to come up under them to learn certain things. And then we made this thing our own, meaning the Most High made it for us. This is, this is a constant journey, man. New Revelation, we talked about it at the end of uh, camp. And I mentioned that, the, that, you know, I'll say it as a theory, but it's damn near fact. But uh, they can't find... Look it up yourself. They can't find I'm all over the place. Bear with me. I'm get back to the main topic. You know me. They, they we looked up where Mount Sin uh, Mount Sinai is. When did they find Mount Sinai? What scholar or what archaeologist found? And they say we well, we believe in Saudi Saudi Arabia. We believe it's over here. One site said, uh, "Oh, it's in Jerusalem." Mount Sinai couldn't be in Jerusalem because Moses never went there. Moses received the commandments on the mount. It was uh, the mount in the Sinai Peninsula. The Sinai Peninsula. What is a peninsula? The wilderness was a peninsula. Let me bring this over. So I'm all over the place. Okay, so the Sinai Peninsula. This is a golf. That's a gulf, and that's a peninsula. Florida is a peninsula. So this was the wilderness. So the commandments, he got it on a, a mountain. There was no mountain there. They couldn't, they can't find, to this day, the scholars, I mean the uh, archaeologists, the his, Bible historians, history historians in general, they argue over, well, we think that that's uh, Mount Sinai. Now, they were supposed to discover every goddamn thing. But, um, so, the so-called mountain that uh, Moses went, went up into, it said, went up into, is a ship. And I'll use, a, the, the, I'll use a theory. It's a theory, but it was a ship. It was a ship that guided the Israelites. In the day, it was a pillar of cloud, and at night, it was a uh, 
pillar of fire by night. In other words, the, the, the ship turned on the lights to give the Israelites lights. It was no, it was black, pitch black dark out there. No electricity, no cable, nothing. No refrigerators. So when they ate something, they had to eat it fresh every day. All right? But anyway, that's a whole nother, uh, as they say, kettle of fish. So now, okay, let me come back over here about the covenant. As it does say of Yahweh, in an acceptable time have I heard thee. So when did he start hearing Israelites? Uh, through Abba, fulfilling Malachi 4, 5, and 6. And uh, Malachi uh, 4, and uh, what is that, chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. It's not talking about John the Baptist. It's talking about Abba Bivens. So scholars will say, I mean, we can go to that too. And even scholars, they kind of say that, yeah, that's, that's John the Baptist. But they really don't understand that Elijah came, came back two times. Came back as John the Baptist, and he also came back as Abba Bivens. That's, that's Elijah. So the Lord really started hearing us. Because remember, they weren't dealing with the New Testament. He was the one that went into the New Testament. And then he broke off and started. He broke off because the Most High put the Spirit on him to broke, break off. That's why the former one West camps are so dominant. And in a day of salvation, that's getting ready to come. I help, I helped thee, and he would help us again. I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, the Israelites, to establish the earth. So we got to get the covenant, which is the new covenant, to what? To establish the earth. Saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Uh, to cause, uh, to inherit the desolate heritage. Palestine is going to be a, a, a desert until it's rebuilt back up by the missiles. What's going, to, what's going to happen to Babylon the Great, a.k.a. USA, is going to happen to the land of Israel, but Babylon will not be built back up. It's going to remain a desert forever and ever. And uh, Palestine, Israel, um, the land of the Israelites, will be a desert, but it will be built, it will flourish again. And we're going to take over the whole world. And that's, that's going to happen. East elite knows this. Knows this. So anyway, let me come back over here. And that's why they got a dossier on me. They got a dossier on General Yohani. They got a dossier on Captain Tazariak. They got a dossier on on all these leaders. Uh, they definitely got a dossier on um, Bishop Nathaniel. And why? Because... We have the truth. They said, oh, these guys got the truth. We got to do something about this. So anyway, coming back to this picture, look at this guy. He got he wore, wearing a stocking cap or whatever, a do-rag. Yeah, these are church people. And I believe this this got to be Candace Owens. It's got to be Candace Owens. But this picture, you see all these jakes? This guy is, uh, he's a pastor. I forget his name. Then you got the... the the two sisters, which one of them died, she died, she's still living. Um, so they all got their hands, you know, the scriptures say lay hands on him. They all got their hands on him. He got his head bowed down, <clears throat> thinking that he's going to make America great again. He's not going to make America great again. Now, I don't know. I can't go into the mind of the Most High, so I don't know when he's going to take this place out. Because he could take this place out in, um, okay, if he becomes president, that would be, that would be 2025. He'll go into office, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So 30, that's five years. So now the Most High could say, I'm going to take this place out in uh, 20, 2030. So there would obviously be a new president, right? Because he can't, rule for more than two terms but we believe all the hell that's going on 
Jacob's trouble. We're feeling Jacob's trouble right now. You can you can look at the news and and go and filter it right through uh, Second Ezra fifteen and Second Ezra sixteen. So this, if he becomes the president, king of Babylon, pursuant to uh, Isaiah chapter fourteen, he will usher in. Oh, he's gonna make America great. He gonna make America great. He will. He will be the guy that usher usher in this uh, this destruction. And he will be the guy before the destruction. The destruction will not take place until the micro C hit. Um, the, that that prophecy is fulfilled. And the technology is already there. There's maybe fifty thousand, which is a very small number mainly out of uh sweden you can put the microchip put sweden um implantation of microchips sweden you get all a bunch of go to google go to youtube get a bunch of videos on it and uh you'll see a a guy at a maybe a tattoo shop or uh you know a doctor's office getting a chip in him and he goes to his car he puts his hand by the car the car, the car door unlocks the car starts because of his chip. He can pay for things with his chip. But it's only about 50,000 people, which is a very small number compared to, compared to uh, you know, 8 billion people. They say there's 8 billion people on the planet. So something's going to happen where they got to really, really push this thing to make it happen. And they got people shook up. And they got people to line up for the, uh, you know, the uh, C, C ragamuffin jump shots. But they didn't get every day. No, they might have got 70, maybe 80% of the people to kind of comply. You know? But yeah, this looks like Candace Owens. I could need to get a better shot of her. But, but that's, it's got to be Candace. But you see all these Jakes what represents <clears throat> the black church. This, this, she's probably a Jake. She want to be a white woman. Hey, fuck them people, Jakes in the church. They yeah, forget about, hey, if, if somebody roll up that's a Christian, try to make that conversation short and tell them to go down the street or you pack up and leave. You know, we don't, we're not dealing with you Christians. Now, if you're a Jake that roll up and you sincere, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we'll we'll be with you for two two hours, breaking this down to you. If we see you can't get it, a, a, a heretic after the se uh, first and second uh, admonition, which is stiff warning, reject. Admonition means a stiff warning. If you don't do this, something bad gonna happen to you. So you know we know. The answers are not in the so-called black church. They just lost souls. If they don't know that they're Israelites, just forget them. Just forget them. And all these people right here, if they don't repent, they're gonna they're gonna be destroyed in this destruction. Anyway, yesterday we were going. I have I got a, a list of various scriptures that I put together, and I came across certain lists that I don't even remember when I I don't remember when I put this list together. But um, somehow the conversation that we were speaking yesterday went into uh, the destruction of this place and fire. So I, I said, let me pull out this list. And I said, let's just follow this list. So we got a, about three, four precepts <clears throat> out. Uh, let me see. Let me go to, uh, I believe we hit Job 41.21. Let's go, let's go to Job 41.21. Job 41 21 and all you guys that turn your back on the plow you're going to take this sea ragamuffin I mean the uh, the jump shot and you're going to be set on fire this place is done there's no hope for this place 
if uh, Netanyahu, BB Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu knew what he was doing and he had the power to stop it, he would stop it altogether. They'd get on the phone and they would stop it. The, if the U.S. knew <clears throat> what was going to happen to this system, they would, they would get rid of that guy. They would arrest him. They would do something. They would stop it. They don't realize that all he's doing is fulfilling uh, prophecy. All he's doing is fulfilling prophecy. He's the uh, the uh, lease of the flock. He's gonna draw them into that into that uh, the the war of Armageddon. You go up against Iran, you're pretty much going against Russia, China, the, and the rest of the BRIC nations. And eventually, the U.S. will have to get involved, and there and there goes your Armageddon. But it will not happen. Unless and until the majority of the planet Earth, I would say 95% of the people of the planet Earth will be micro C hipped. <clears throat> Job 41 and 21. His breath. Can, well, this is. Ta I'm sorry. This is talking about. We read this already. This is talking about Leviathan. Because they're going to try to escape to these city un underwater cities. And the scriptures say that. The serpent's going to get him. Um, Amos, uh, Amos, nine, Amos 9 and 2 on down. So let's go to Revelation 14 and 8. Because we're, you know, look, Habakkuk 2, one of my favorite uh, chapters, it says, if it tarry, wait for it, it shall surely come, it shall not tarry. So we see all the prophecies coming to pass. So you be a fool to think that this man going to go another 50 years. Isaiah 14 and 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And this is also in Isaiah 21. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That's, well, I'll give you an example. What precept come to mind too is Re uh, Revelation 17 and 4. <clears throat> where you had <clears throat> Kamala in Africa with a checkbook with m hundreds of millions of dollars ready to give to these African nations if they change their laws to protect the alphabet community. And there was uh, one nation, it, I believe it was Uganda, that the cabinet and the president said, no, we ain't changing that. And she had money. She said, we don't want your money. We ain't changing that. But uh, however, they will accept the uh, karagna. So let's look up the word fornication, right? Made dr uh, nations uh, drink of the wine of the wrath of a forni fornication, meaning meaning passing laws to protect Mo's and democracy and the MOTB. Let me look up the word fornication. Pornia, illicit sexual intercourse. What's illicit sexual intercourse? Adultery, fornication. That, there we go. Can't even say that word. There we go. That's what Kamala Harris was pushing. That's what she's pushing. That's why she went to Africa. Animals. This is the thing that she was pushing. Sexual intercourse, I'm sorry, adultery, 
that she was pushing this. That's what she was pushing. So now let's go to. And I'm gonna go to the, I'm gonna go to Google too. Let's go to Revelation. Seventeen, and it's not talking about you had Bishop Nate. Um. He's saying Yahweh a lot more and Yahweh shy. He's kind of throwing it out there. He wants to throw the money back in the elite face. Um, let me see. 17 and 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color that represents us. Uh, John, uh, John the Apostle actually saw a woman that looked good, that, you know, that you know it got him riled up in a sexual way and decked with gold <clears throat> and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand it has nothing to do with as Nate would pull out oh this goes hand in hand with uh, Revelation 13 no two different things um, full of abomination and filthiness of a fornication. So let's look up the word abomination. Abomination. Abomination, a foul thing, sexually a foul thing, a detestable thing. When you shall see the about see the abomination of desolation. Abomination of desolation. Because these guys, these Romans, they were into what they were into. So now let me come over here. I mean, I'm sorry. Let me let me get some more words. Pull out some more words. Extrapolate some more words. Filthiness. Let's look up the word filthiness. Impurity, filthiness, in 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 a sexual sense. Fornication. Pornia. In the New Testament, when you come across the word fornication, like in 1 Corinthians and so forth, it's talking about adultery. Same thing. This, that, and that. So Kamala was over there pushing the laws. And that's why Jake men don't want to vote for her. Jake men are not feeling that woman. I mean, they would vote for Trump more so as a protest. <clears throat> but you got our women, which are totally, which are really not our women. They doing what they want to do. So let them die. Let them, let them fucking go down with the ship. Okay, so now let me do this. Let me find a Google. Okay, let me come over here. Oh, you had, um, it's coming up. <clears throat> you had uh, Barack Obama scolding Jake men. One of those crowns I have here fell off. I'm some like kind of a. I'm going to go ahead and, and just say. Oh, so he came out of the woodwork, he crawled out from a rock. And started cursing out Jake Men for not voting voting for Kamala. He was saying, "That's the best candidate. You can't. You voted for me. Why don't you vote for her?" 
They voted for you because they thought they were going to actually get changed. They thought, oh, they, we finally got one of ours in there. And you were nothing but an empty suit, and you're still an empty suit. So that's just, so your speech, your, your thousand vote, elect, ten thousand vote electrical speech, is not going to change Jake men. And they and they were offended by it. Like I said, they voted for you because they thought you were going to really do something for Jake. You didn't did a damn thing, man. Edomite presidents did more for Jake than than you. Let me open this up. See what's going on here. Okay, here's one. Destroying the city. NYC is deliberately causing homelessness. Yeah, the government, we're finding out through, and, and it, what happened in NC, North Carolina, that people, Jake, people are waking up. Edomites, certain Jakes, they're waking up to the to the mind controllers, let's say. Let me see here. Okay. So... Um, let me do this. Google. I really didn't have nothing planned. I'm just kind of all over the place. Um, it's Mount Sinai located in the wilderness. Matter of fact, let me, let me, let me do this. Let me do this. Bear with me for a minute. Yes, Mount Sinai, Sinai is located in the wilderness as described in the Bible. This theory is based on biblical references uh, that describe the mountain as being located in the wilderness. This location is also believed to be the site where the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. And well, they said if you go to enough of these, ask these questions at Google, they're saying that scholars. Let me do this. I'm sorry. I'm changing up again. Did archaeologists discover Mount Sinai? The question is, did archaeologists discover Mount Sinai? No, no, they haven't found it. Esau finds, they know about everything, man. <clears throat> there is no archaeological evidence that confirms the location of Mount Sinai. However, some have proposed that Mount Sinai is located in the Jabal al uh, La, 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 Laos mountain range in Saudi Arabia. Wait a minute, here's Saudi Arabia. Here's Saudi Arabia. The so-called Mount Sin uh, Sinai that they talk about was a a ship that's not there. After the Lord brought that ship down and gave Moses a commandment to give to Israel, the ship went back, back into the <clears throat> the great beyond. <clears throat> so they're saying it's in Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> I'm trying to find. Okay, Saudi Arabia. Wait a minute. They're saying, well, it's got to be in Saudi Arabia. This is the wilderness. How many miles is that? We're talking, uh, we're talking over a thousand miles. That's about a thousand, a thousand plus miles. So they didn't come over here. Unless they, they went, see, see, they got it all messed up. They didn't, they didn't go through this part of Red Sea. They went right here. I keep going through this. So that theory that I have is um, 
that, that so-called mountain that, that Moses went up on was a gigantic ship. Ezra thought that Yahushua was on a mountain. He was on a mountain, a mountain made by the heavens, made by the Most High. Esau has man-made mountains, right? If Esau can make a, let me do this. Are there man-made mountains on the planet Earth? Let's see. Well, there are no true mountains created entirely by humans. There are man-made structures that can be considered artificial mountains. Okay, so Esau can make an, a mountain. He can make a mountain. So if, if if this man can make a mountain, you mean to tell me the most I can't make a mountain that flies? Let's go to Zechariah 6. You know what Zechariah 5 says, right? Zechariah 6. And I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. That's metal. Let me look up the word brass. So Zechariah saw two ships, as he said in the fifth chapter, a flying roll, but he saw two ch uh, ships. Let's just go to brass. Copper, bronze, copper, uh, br uh, bronze, as copper alloy, uh, feathers, copper, copper. And right here, one of the words is steel, which is a metal. Chain is a metal, copper is a metal. Brass is a me metal, brazen is a metal. So we know, we got, man, I got a list that I put together years ago. There got to be about 25 precepts on um, the so-called UFOs. And this is another one that's going to be added to the list. The mountain in Sinai in the wilderness was an actual gigantic ship. Remember, it was a ship, a gigantic ship that led, through, led them through the... Uh, uh, the Gulf of Suez. So anyway, let's go back to, uh, I'm sorry. Let me come over here. Where am I? Why did Kamala Harris make a trip to Africa? Okay, v VP Kamala Harris visits visit to Africa delivering on US. Let's see if we can open this thing up. Vice President Kamala Harris uh, reflects on the trip to Africa. Vice President Kamala Harris I want to know why did she go over there? Just filtering, every, filtering everything to the scriptures, current event. Okay, so 
on he, J, Ham, you know, Africa, they ready to take, they ready to line up and take that Karagma. Because they don't, they don't understand the scriptures. Vice President Harris visit uh, to Africa delivering on U.S. commitments or uh, countering China and Asia. Let me see here. I don't know if they're going to. Let me let me do this. Let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. I'm not going to. Kamala Harris, let me do it this way. Kamala Harris makes a trip to Af to Africa. I'll put in gay rights. Let's see what comes up. I think I said Uganda is it's, it's Ghana. Which the Israelites in Ghana. Uh, John Legend, the singer, he's Ghanaian. Of the, of Vice President Harris in Ghana addressing human rights amid. Let's open this up. This might be a better one, but let's open this up. That's uh, Revelation 17 and 4. That's. Uh, Revelation 14 and 8. Okay, Vice President Harris in Ghana addressing human rights amid anti-alphabet efforts in Africa. And they turned it down. And she came with a checkbook. And she works for the elite. That's all she is. She's that. Jake men ain't gonna... Uh, Jake men are not gonna vote for her because she's a woman. That's one thing. Women make decisions based upon emotion, and we're in, in a time of war. Let me see what this says. All right, during her first full day in Africa, Ghana and uh, Vice President Kamara met with the nation's uh, president uh, raising human rights issues. They call it human rights. And growing competition from China. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let me be clear about where we stand. She First makes me sick to my stomach, man. The real reason why Jake ain't going to fight for a vote for her because she's, number one, she's a woman. Okay. Uh, okay. Currently being discussed in Ghana's parliament is the uh, promotion of proper human, human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values a bill that would imprison those that identify as alphabet people and criminalize criminalize advocacy for alphabet rights harris said on monday that so she's for that she's for that she's for that you know uh changing of the body the body parts you know, I, I got to be careful. It says, so she's, that's what she represents. Harris said on Monday that she discussed human rights. They're saying that if a man, man, he's 12 years old, or I, I, I always identify myself as uh, another gender, and therefore the, the government will pay for it. It could be $100,000, they'll pay for it. If you go to pr the prison system, They'll pay for that. I, I'm, I, I think I'm a woman. I want to change my plumbing. And they'll pay for it. Because it's pushing their agenda, their policies. Let me read again. Harris said on Monday that she discussed human rights with Ghana's president, Nana Akufo, Adu, whatever. But, but did not... Uh, specifically comment on anti 
uh, alphabet bill before parliament because that's what she really came for. She was given a script, you know, and she was told what to do and she did it and it failed. And she's married to a small hat, which they got information on that dude. He beat, he, 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 uh, his Edomite wife, he had, they had a nanny. He, he was popping a nanny and, um, that's where the divorce came from. Uh, and got the, the nanny pregnant. Another woman he beat the shit out of. So that's who she's married to. This is an evil woman right here. So that's the main thing she was pushing. And there they go, giving, giving, uh, uh so many millions and billions of dollars to other nations, but when it comes to Americans, they don't get shit. The $750,000 that she called herself giving to, which is a, 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 I would say, no, I don't want that fucking money. Come to find out, and I did a video on that, that that's a loan. And if you don't pay that loan in a certain amount of time, they can take your house, your car, your kids, whatever. So this woman is the D, the D word. She's the D word. See the, the so-called black men they can they get a they pick up a vibe from this woman. And and Trump ain't no different. If Trump becomes all the same thing gonna happen, they're gonna push whether she becomes president or Trump becomes the new president, again, they're gonna do they're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna push, they're gonna do two major things. They're gonna push the micro C hip and they're gonna usher in uh, the uh, war of Armageddon. That's it. So now let me go back to Revelation 14 and 8. And this man, this man's going down, and I, I can feel it in my bones. It says, uh, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is falling, is falling. That great city, uh, which we know that what that is, that's code for something else because she made all, all nations of the, uh, all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And we read uh, Revelation 17. Mm -hmm. Let me do this. Come on back to this. Bear me for a minute. Bear me for a minute. Okay, let me, I got to bring this back up. Bear with me for a minute. You have no choice but to bear with me or move on. Come on, man.
Just bear with me. Anyway, um, what I'll do is I'll, let me mention some of these precepts here, if you can still hear me. Isaiah 33 and 12, uh, Isaiah 4, uh, 54 and 16, Isaiah uh, 66, verse 15 and 16. And then the 24th verse, Isaiah uh, 66. And these, these, all these precepts, we're clearly talking about the downfall of this place. Just bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Okay, let me do it this way. Let me pull this up. See what happens over here. Okay, I want to go to uh, the... Uh, okay, let me try this. I might just have to close this down. Come on now. Okay, so Okay, Revelation we've hit Okay, let's hit Revelation 14 and 8 again And there followed another angel uh, saying, Babylon, please forgive me, Babylon is falling, is falling, that great city, because she made <clears throat> all nations, the she is uh, Babylon, the U.S., all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That fornication is what I just read about Kamala going to Africa. The main reason why she went to Africa, this was what, two years ago, a year and a half ago or whatever, to push that to push, have them change their laws to protect those alphabet people because they res they deserve uh, rights, human rights. And that proves that this is Babylon the Great. Doom, 
for worshipers of the beast. And it goes into if you accept the mark, which you have a lot of the major camps, not all of them, but a lot of these major camps, IUIC, ISUBK, they refuse to say that that's talking about the micro C hip. They'll under, they'll see it when it actually comes, when their men actually gonna have to have to wait in line or go to the doctor or go to the tattoo artist to get it. That's when they're gonna see it. That's when Captain Desire gonna see it. That's when Bishop Nate gonna see it. then they're going to have to explain it to their congregation because they're going to have a lot of questions for you concerning wh what the deal is. And don't be surprised if they all, all of a sudden want to flock to GMS. If you're of the elect, you're going to be down with GM. If you're not, you can be of other camps and, and still be of the elect. But not when you're teaching that bullshit that, uh, you know, MOTB sleeping with white women. Paul had it. King um, King Solomon had it. Uh, sin in all of its forms, whether it be religious or political. I got to keep bringing that topic up. It keeps coming up. Okay, it says receive the mark in the forehead or in the hand. It could be the right on the left hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture. By the way, that's the, the missiles, the fire. The lasers from the ships, the the uh, the nuclear the warheads from the ICBM missiles from the uh, hypersonic uh, missiles uh, system that cannot pick radar radar can kind of pick it up, but it can't. In other words, you're going to see things. You might see a hundred missiles coming at you by radar, but there might be ten thousand missiles coming at you. So when it, you can't you can't stop all the missiles from Russia, China, wh whoever possesses missiles, they're gonna shoot shoot them all, shoot them, including the NATO and EU nations that possess missiles. I said the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture. So all you men and women that turn your back on this truth and went back into the world, you're gonna take the karagma. And you're gonna die right here in America, into the cup of the of of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, because they're gonna be on top looking down at you, while you burn, and we're gonna be in this if we're of the elect. We, we say we're hopeful elect. We that humble where we say we hope that we are the, one of the elect. Give diligence to make. That calling the election, sure. So we are diligent. So we have to be the elect. But we say, you know, in the spirit of humility, that we pray that we make it, that we pray that we endure to the end. We're not at the end yet. So every last one of you that went out back into the world, there were 1992 Israelites, 1986 Israelites, and 2001 Israelites, People that came up under comfy and so forth. The ones of you that got, you know, you you saw uh, this guy finally died. You left. You wasn't with it. He was he was he pulled a fast one on y'all, and y'all got um mad at it. And then you just threw all Israel out. I ain't never deal with them Israelites again. Well, no, it's it's not about not being an Israelite because you're an Israelite whether you like it or not. It says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, righteous uh, judgment, a justifiable anger, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. Now, you got Nate teaching that this is actual hell. It ain't talking about no actual hell. It's talking about Babylon being on fire by the missiles and the lasers from the ship in the presence of the holy angels because they're going to be on top looking down. We're going to be on top in the ships looking down, uh, Psalm 91, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up uh, forever and ever for a long time, and they have no rest day nor night. That's in slavery, uh, who worship the beast in his image and who whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna see. You're gonna finally notice. Your eyes are gonna open. Your spirit's gonna open to see that the mark is what GMS said it was. That it's the micro C hip. 
And then you're going to have to make a decision from there. If you're one of the elect, you're going to, you're going to come from, um, from, you're going to come from, come up out of her. You're going to leave those camps. If they, if your leader don't have no, 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 uh, if, and, and it's, and it behooves the leaders to say we were wrong. It is what GMS has been saying. It is. They said, here is the patience of the saints. The saints start with the elect. Here are they. That keep the commandments of the Most High, and the faith of and the faith of Yahweh Shai, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the the dead which die in the Lord. Anybody that died in the Lord, from men forth, yea, saith saith the Spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Now, what if you had an Israelite that never did no works? They're going in the spiritual world, world too, but they're not going to have no record as to their position. They're not going to have a, a top position because you get your top position based upon your works. And I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the son of man. But wait a minute. It says in Revelation 19, he came on a white horse, but now he's coming in on the cloud. What is it? It's talking about a ship. Horses just represent power. And he's not going to have his garment stained. You got IUIC teaching that, yeah, when the Lord come back, he's going to have blood and guts and eyeballs and lungs and, and uh, uh, big intestines and small intestines all on his garments. It's going to be bloody. No, he's not going to have a, a, a drop of blood on his garment. That's just... That's a vision that Isaiah saw and a vision that John saw. He's not going to be stained with, with, with Esau's blood. What the hell are you talking about, man? So they, these guys don't know when something is literal um, compared to something that's spiritual. Having on his head a golden crown, 19 chapter that says many crowns, and in his hand a sharp sickle. He ain't going to have a real, he's not going to have a garden tool in his hand. And another angel came down at the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the, the cloud, thrust in thy sickle uh, and reap, for the time is, is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe, is ready. And he that sat on the cloud, thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Now, the thrusting of sickles talking about shooting lasers on them along with the other angels while we get, while the elect gets beamed up. And another angel out of the temple came out of the temple, temple which is uh, in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. And another angel uh, came, came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, thrust in thy sickle, sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of grape. That's talking about Esau, of the vine and of the earth, uh, for her grapes are full ripe. So is the Lord coming down to jump in a barrel of grapes so he can make wine? No, the grapes rep represent, it's symbolic. He, this, this, this is what John saw, but it represented this place getting destroyed by fire. It said, an angel thrust in the sickle under the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the, uh, the wrath of the Most High. And the, and the wine press was trodden without the city. And blood came out of the wine press, which is, which is uh, the blood of the wine, is, uh, is the blood of the grape is wine, which is liquid, even unto the horse bridle uh, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. That's not going to actually happen. That's not going to literally happen. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 33, verse 12. Give you a couple more precepts. Isaiah 33, verse 12. This is why guys fall off because they don't go into the scriptures. Oh, I used to be in that. I used to be in that nonsense. 
I got out. I came to my senses. I went back to being a Baptist. All Baptists, all Christians will accept the mark unless they're of the elect, they will repent. So uh, where am I? Isaiah 33, verse 12. And the people shall be as the burnings of lime, as thorns cut up shall they be burned in the fire. What fire is it talking about? The nuclear fire. Let me see some. Let me go to the headline. The judgment of the Most High. You can really read this whole chapter. And when all hell breaks loose, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. So this is talking about the destruction of uh, Esau's kingdom. And when Babylon goes down, the NATO will go down, the EU will go down, and they'll be ready to go into captivity. Okay, Isaiah... 54 and 16 says this I created the smith that blow up the coal in the fire that makes a weapon weapon for his a matter of fact let me go ahead and read it Isaiah 54 and 16 it also says in the 17 verse no weapon form shall prosper against us behold I have created the smith that blow up the coal in the fire the modern day smith are the scientists they they're the ones that made come up with the missile technology which the most i gave to them and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work and i have created the waster to destroy the waster to destroy uh, robert oppenheimer made a uh, statement you can look him up he quoted uh i always i, I, I brushed this up the, the Havana not gita whatever it's an old hindu proverb of uh, I believe it's Kali and he said I, I am he said I am become death the destroyer of worlds so he quoted that and he started crying as a matter of fact let me do this let me see if I can bring this up bear me for a minute so when you read Isaiah 54 and 16 you got to think of these German scientists and you got to think of a man by the name of Robert Robert Oppenheimer give me give me a second here let's see what comes up give it a second or two okay Restore the page. Okay, this is what I want to go to, and I'm getting ready to close. I know I went long. Okay, let me see here. So we went through this, and she she's just a puppet. She just represents the elite. That's all she is. She's not. She's not smart, you know, she's not prolific, she's not, she's, she's not a genius. She ain't running a damn thing. She gets a strip, script, she learns a script. Just like Trump, Trump gets a script too. Trump, Trump ain't running a damn thing, but his big mouth. He's a little guy, he's a little guy, man. Okay, let me do this here. Where did I say I was going to go? Okay, let me do this. Like I said, this is why individuals that come into Israel fall off because they don't they don't look look at the scriptures and see something on the news and automatically filter it through the scriptures. Okay, let me see here. Robert Oppenheimer. 
Okay, that's Robert Oppenheimer. They made a movie on it. It was a good movie, a damn good movie. I didn't get the chance to see it. Okay, so let's get the backstory on this guy. Okay. Damn, he died in 67. J. Robert Oppenheimer was an American uh, theological physicist who served as uh, the director of the Manhattan Project. You can read that, Los Angeles, Los Alamos Laboratory during World War II. He is often called the father of the what? Atomic bomb for, for, for his role in overseeing the development of the first nuclear weapon. Let me do this. Let me see. I am become deaf. This is what I want. So it, this is it. When he realized, you know, the the power of the of the bomb, he cried and he made this statement. It's all over YouTube. You can find it. He said, "Now he said, now I." Now I am become deaf, the destroyer of worlds, is a quote, and he actually quoted this guy, is a quote from the Hindi scriptures, the Bhagavad Gita. I always botch this up. The ba Bhagavad Gita that is often attributed to J. Uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer, the physicist who led the development of, of the atomic bomb he was just part of it he didn't he didn't he didn't he wasn't a lone guy to make the come up with these bombs he was a part of it and he made the statement he cried he said look man this this thing can destroy us all uh what's the term um what's the term there's a term can't even think of it how it's worded mutually uh, assured destruction, mad, mutually, mutually uh, assured destruction. I'm, I'm, I'm watching it up. What does mutually assured destruction mean? Mutually, mutual destroy, uh, assured destruction. That there, there it is. Mutual. Uh, that's why he cried and he and, and he quoted that Hindi pro, Hindu proverb. Mutual, mutually assured destruction. Mad is a military strategy that assumes that if one nuclear armed country, America's a nuclear armed country, Russia's a nuclear armed country. China is a nuclear armed country. France is a nuclear armed country. Great Britain is a nuclear armed country. Uses nuclear weapons against another. Both countries will be dis destroyed. The strategy is based on the idea that the destructive power of nuclear weapons is so great that neither country would use them. But they are going to use them. Because the Most High is going to put it in the spirit to to use them. Most High said he's going to come as a thief in the night. See, Jake don't go into stuff like this. That's why Jake going to get caught out there. Jake want to go in and freak offs with Diddy.
And you got to be a stoic to be in this thing. You guys that fell off, you, number one, you were not of the elect. And number two, you were not a stoic. You, you, you were an Epicurean, man. P. Diddy is an Epicurean. Commodus, the son of uh, Marcus Aurelius, was an uh, Epicurean. His father was a stoic. And he was a Jake, too. Okay, Isaiah 66, and I'm going to close on this. I went long. Isaiah 66, verse 15 and 16, and we're going to jump down to 24. Come back to the scriptures. For behold, the Lord will come with a fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flame of fire. For by fire and by his, by his sword will Yahweh uh, plead with all flesh, will plead with all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. That's getting ready to happen. Now let's jump down to the 24th verse. I'm a 24th verse. I'm, I know I'm, I'm here, but I just want to look at. Uh, I'm just looking at something else. Okay. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord, yeah, uh, Yahweh. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have been that have transgressed against me, for their for their worm shall die, for their worm shall uh, not die, neither shall their fi uh, fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Now that's not really going to happen. That's parabolic. That's a parabolic talk. We're not going to say okay. Here comes the Sabbath and the new moon. We got to go see them dead bodies. On we got to go to hell and see them burn. It's just talk, we're going to know Babylon the Great is going to be here as the largest desert on the planet Earth, and everybody's going to be talking about it. And you're going to fly over it and show your children. See that place right there? We was in hell back there. That's the place that the Most High ultimately destroyed. Babylon the Great is going to be utterly destroyed. 5,000 square miles of this place is going to be utterly destroyed. And um, whoever becomes president most likely will usher in this uh, destruction. I say that because we don't know if we're going to go to 2000, uh, 2026, 2030. We don't know that. I'm sorry. Shit. 2031. We don't know that. But we strongly believe that whoever becomes the next president will usher in, introduce the world to the MOC, MOTB, and ultimately usher in and welcome the, the missiles to destroy this goddamn place. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say shalom on to the next shalom.